What's up? We're all in here. This time on 3D Nerd Stop, we're going to upgrade our printer by adding a second cooling fan. Alright guys, this week we're going to upgrade our printer by adding a second fan to it. This is the fan duct I'd like to use to add the second fan. Um, this was created by the novice expert. I don't know if you've ever checked out his channel or not. If you haven't, I got a link down to his channel in the description below. You should go check him out. He's done some really interesting things with a Robo. Um, now, if I'm not mistaken, he's got a Robo R1. He doesn't have the R1 Plus, or at least I think the main printer he uses is not an R1 Plus. I could be wrong, but he really does some amazing upgrades to his printer. Um, so this is one of his upgrades that he did was adding a second fan duct. Now, as it says, this is a screwless, toolless fan duct. Uh, it's pretty cool how it clips onto the printer. He's got a whole video here on the different iterations he went through and how he did it. Uh, you should check him out. He's really cool, really great guy. So I downloaded this file and opened it up here in Cura. Okay, so as you can see, this is what the fan duct looks like. Pretty nice looking. The fan slides in the back here. And then the fan duct clips onto the hot end or the hot end sled. I'm not sure what else to call it. That the hot end is in that moves back and forth. So that's what clips in right here. Um, we'll show you that once we get it printed out. Uh, so we'll just print this out real quick. Uh, we'll do this on our standard settings. Well, close to our standard settings. We're going to do it on a layer height of 0.2. Our shell thickness of 1.2, our top and bottom at 1.2. I'm going to do 100% fill density because I want this to be rather strong. Uh, plus it's going to be near the hot end and stuff so I want to try and keep it from melting real easy. So we'll just do it at 100% fill density which really isn't filling that much in but it that's what I did it at. And uh, we'll do it at 60 millimeters a second. We'll do the print temperature at 210 and the bed temperature at 50. Now I'm not going to do any support material inside here. Um, I think it should print just fine, even though it's going to have to bridge this distance up here. I mean, the worst it'll probably do is leave a little bit of stringies over here on the side, and if we have to, we can always pick those out. Okay, so let's save this off to the SD card, take it over to the printer, and get the printer heater up and get her printing. Jack it up. guys here's the first one uh, as you can see it printed out real nice the layers came out nice it looks good nice solid print no bad places now there is a little bit here on the inside as you can see that's a little bit scraggly this would have been the top side where it had to bridge across but it's about like I expected and of course you can get in there with a file and stuff and clean that up so it's no big deal but other than that I would say all in all the print looks really good it's really nice couple little spots like across the face there there's a little bit of 
a rough spot that could be cleaned up, but nothing big. Real easy stuff to do. All right, so let's jump over to the printer real quick. All right, well, we've jumped over to the printer here, and you can see here, here's the hot end. And this is where the fan will go. When it goes on, it'll go right here. Now, the hot end heating wires are in the way. Uh, the thermistor wires are kind of in the way. You can leave them there. Uh, that does fit, but that does pinch in and not hit those wires, but it won't with these up here. So we are going to have to relocate these wires. Luckily, they have these really nice clips on here, so they're real easy to unclip. And for test purposes right now, we'll just move it off to the side and we'll worry about getting it wired in once we get everything else in place. So let's move that off to the side there. And then this, have the fan here. There we go, back out just a little bit. We got the fan here, and this just kind of goes right here and then just kind of pivots on like that. Okay? So you can see how it mounts. Now, it's kind of hard to see from where we're looking at, so let me change the angle here real quick. All right, so I switched over to the other side here so you can kind of see this a little better, hopefully. So let's turn on the printer real quick. And then what we will do is we're going to move it down. towards the bed here. up there okay guys this looks like this is about the best shot I can get you as you can see which hopefully we can see the new fan duct is actually hitting the build plate but the hot ends not the hot ends still about five millimeters off the build plate so what that tells me is this fan duct is too big for the R1 plus now it may not necessarily be too big for the R1 plus what it might be too big for is the hot end that's in the R1 Plus. Because the guy that designed this hot end designed it for an E3 hot end, and this is not an E3. So, that's why it doesn't fit properly. So, let's jump back over to the computer and pull this fan duct up in Fusion 360 and do a little modification to it. Okay, now some of you might be wondering what's going to be the best way to determine how far the hot end was off the build plate when the fan duct was touching. So this is what I decided to do and how I decided to come up with how far off it is. First thing I'm going to do, because I can on this printer with the, cell, with the smart LCD screen, is go into prepare and go to auto home. Okay, what auto home will do is auto home the build plate and then auto home the hot end. Okay, so then we can come back in here and go back under prepare and then go all the way down to the bottom of the menu to move axis, go down to one millimeter, go to Z. As we can see right now, Z is set at negative one. So what we're going to do is turn it and go up and we'll run it up a little ways. Okay, then we can clip the duct back on it. Alright, and then we'll go back under prepare again. Go all the way back down to move. One millimeter. Z. Now we're going to wind it down close to the build plate. 
I've got a plus seven right now. Okay, plus seven's not touching. So there's plus five. There's plus three, and that's pushing down. So plus four is just barely touching the bell plate. Actually, it's just a hair off. So three is just about right. So that tells me that this is hitting the build plate three millimeters before the hot end is. Okay, so it's three millimeters too long. But we don't want the fan duct to actually touch the build plate with the hot end. Because if we do that, then it's rubbing across our prints as the hot end does. So we actually want it to be higher than the hot end. So I'm going to move it up so it'll fit the standard nozzle that comes with the R1 Plus. I'm going to move it up about seven millimeters. The reason I say that is because the nozzle I have on mine right now is a, a replacement hard, hardened nozzle. And because it is, it actually sticks down a little bit further than the standard nozzle that comes with the printer does. So I want to make sure, or at least hopefully, this will still work for people that just have a standard nozzle on there. And they'll still be able to use this duct when we're done. Alright guys, here we are. We're in uh, Autodesk Fusion 360. Um, I don't know if any of you have used this. This is a really nice CAD software. Uh, you can do a lot with it. You can do 3D modeling in it. Uh, you can do 3D designs that you can then cam out with uh, a CNC machine. You can do a bunch of stuff with it. And a really nice part about this software is they give you the full version and you can use it for free if you're a hobbyist or for a startup business until you make $100,000 a year using it and then you have to start paying for it. So I think that's really cool of the company to do that. They let you use the software for free, the full version, full power. They don't limit you on what you can do with it. The whole thing is set to go and really cool. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show y'all first how to import an STL file and then how to convert that STL file into a so solid model so you can actually manipulate it, okay? So the first thing you'll need to do is come over here underneath your browse. You have this little shell that says unsaved. And you want to come all you want to right click on it and come down to the bottom. It says do not capture design history, which is this down here on the bottom of the screen. As you do things, it captures each step you do. So if you want to go back to a certain point, all you have to do is go back and, and erase everything that was past that point. Okay, but in order to import it, you have to turn this off. So we click that, gives you a little warning message about it. Click continue. And if you notice that bottom bar disappeared. Okay, so now it's not going to record what we're doing. It doesn't, it's not going to have a timeline showing every little step we took to do everything. At least not for importing. Okay, so you can come up here to insert and you want to insert a mesh. So if you click that and then you just go to the file you want to insert. This was his file and you open it up and as you can see it brings it in. Okay. Now this says it's the top, but that's the front. That's not the top of it. So if we spin it around here, we can see that this is the top. So if it ever drops a piece in here and you want to orient it so the cube has everything right, correct on based on how you want to turn it, get it to where you can see the top view. Then you right click over here, go to set current view as top. And that reorients x y and z so this is now the top view makes it real easy now so you can navigate through it okay so the first thing we want to do is we got to come over here you know the mesh has been inserted um, this is where if you know it was done in centimeters or millimeters meters inches feet you can adjust your scale um, i am pretty sure this was imported as millimeters because when i modified it it was imported as millimeters so all you have to do is set your metric here for how you want to import it. And then you say, okay, and it's imported it. Now, this is a mesh. This is not a model. You cannot manipulate this the way it is right now. So if you want to manipulate it, you have to come over here to your little tree and come down here to where it says body, right click on it and convert the body. Uh, I'm sorry, create a component from body. So that's what you want to do. So you click on it, which creates a component. 
And you want to come back over here and highlight and just mouse over it. And you see how it brings a little dot out here? You want to click on that. You want to activate this component. So that means whatever you're doing now is only affecting this component because this is the component you're working on. If you had multiple components listed over here, you could do whatever you wanted to this one and it wouldn't affect the other components because this is the one you have focus set on. Okay, so what you do after that is you just click off anywhere on here on the screen and then come over and click on the model once and then right click on it and then you want to say mesh to BRAP. Click on that. It's going to pop up a little dialog box over here. You want to option is your new body. You could do new component. I just leave it on new body and hit select. Select is the model you have selected, so it's already selected, and all you have to do is hit OK. Okay. Now this is oops. This is a model. This is now a model that you can manipulate. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of triangles on this model. Okay. And that makes it kind of difficult to clean up, but it's not real too early, too bad. A lot of times when it has all these triangles, if you want to clean it up, to make it easier to manipulate, you can click on a triangle and hit delete, and it will delete some or all of the triangles on that face. This was a flat face, so it deleted all of them. Now, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. There's no rhyme or reason when it does and when it doesn't. You just have to click on the, the triangles and, click, and hit delete. Okay, so that, delete that little one up there. We can rotate it around a little. Go to the back, let's go to the other side real quick. Click in a triangle here and delete it. As you can see, it cleared everything out for us. Come up here, click on this triangle, delete that. Let's go to the face of it. Like this up here is a flat surface. So we can delete that. Now this actually sticks out, but this is another flat surface. So we can delete that. Okay, spin it around here. This right here should be a sing one triangle all the way around here. See, here's one that for some reason it doesn't want to let me delete it. So I just leave that one and go to a different one and delete it. And now as you can see, it combined the two together. For some reason, Fusion just does that. Nothing you can do about it. You just have to Click around until you can find the faces you want to delete. Sometimes you have one that it won't let you delete. You just have to leave it there and deal with it. That's more rare than others. So as you can see, I'm just cleaning up the flat surfaces a little bit in here. And making, making it so they're one solid face. That makes them easier to manipulate when you're trying to manipulate the model. Let's... So this is the completed model. Now, like I said, every once in a while you get weird stuff it won't let you delete. It won't let me delete this. And if I'm not mistaken, it won't let me delete this triangle either. Yeah, it's just for some reason will not let me delete these things. I don't know why. I haven't been able to figure it out. But they're there. But they're not in the way. They don't hurt anything. Uh, they print out just fine. When you turn this into a model to, to a 3D print, it doesn't hurt anything. Now, in order to get this out of Fusion 360, to turn it into a printable model, you just come up here to Make, 3D Print. Okay, and then it says to select the model. So I select this, which selects all of this. And as you can see, it's got the whole thing selected in the lines. Now you can turn off the preview, or I'm sorry, you can turn off the preview if you want to so it doesn't show the mess, it just highlights everything, or you can leave the preview on so you can see all the triangles. I'm gonna pop this out to Print Studio. That's um, Autodesk's 3D printing software. I don't use it other than to generate the model. So we'll click OK here. It takes it a second to pop up here. 
And I know I'm not doing a real good job explaining Fusion 360. There are a lot of wonderful tutorials on Fusion 360 out there. I'm not going to try and teach everybody Fusion 360. It does take a while to learn it. But once you do, it's great. So move to build surface, center. Now, for some strange reason, it wants to pop it like this on here. So we'll have to change its layout. So we're going to need to rotate it this way until it's flat. And then we need to rotate this way until it's flat. And you got to be careful when you do stuff like this to make sure you actually get it flat. Because it, if you don't, it'll let it stick up in the air. I see how it's not flat. See how this is not 100% flat across the build plate. Let's see, auto layout. What does that do? Nothing. Okay, I didn't think so. So we need to rotate it this way just a tiny bit more. Now, as you can see, we're touching all the way along here, which is what we want to be doing. Oops, wrong direction. So now that we're touching all the way across, we're good. We can move on to layout. Now we can actually move on to repair. Now this model ha says it has some errors, which it probably does. But the nice part about this piece of software is you can hit auto repair. And for the most part, it'll fix the model for you. Every once in a while it won't. You got to go figure out what's wrong with it. But this one, it fixes it up just fine. Um, I haven't had any problem with it. You can even inspect the geometry if you want. So now you can see all the geometry again. So we can see that that's fine. Now all you have to do from here is come up to file and export all. And then you just tell it where you want to save it and what you want to name it and it exports as an STL file. Now once you've done that, you can just open it up in Cura. And here it is. This is our modified version loaded up in Cura. Now, it did take me several versions. Uh, it took me about four different versions before I got to this one. There was the original and then three other ones and then this one. Yeah, that's correct. Um, to get everything correct, to make sure I had the right distance. I went up the right distance. I had enough room to put the fan in here and all of it. So it did take a quite a bit of manipulation. Now, depending on the fan you get, it may or may not fit in here. So you may have to go into Fusion, which is one of the reasons why I showed you how to bring it in here and manipulate the size of this fan bay just a little bit so you can get your fan in. Okay. But hopefully you won't have to. Hopefully your fan will slide right in and you won't have any problem with it. Okay. So we'll go through the print settings real quick on this. Uh, we're going to do a 0 0.2 layer height, a 1.2 shell thickness, a 1.2 top and bottom thickness. A fill density of 100%, a print speed of 60, a print temperature of 210, and a bed temperature of 50. So we're going to print it with the same settings we did the first one that you saw. Um, let's save this off to the SD card, take it over to the printer, get the printed, printer heated up, and get her printing. Jack it up.
All right, guys, here you go. This is our final model printed out. As you can see, it looks pretty good. Um, looks about as good as our original one. Now, there's a little more scraggly spots, but uh, it looks fine. I mean, I didn't try and print this out real pretty. I just wanted to make sure it was solid. But it looks pretty good. And it should do exactly what we want it to. Um, now, it did have the same thing on the inside. And sorry, my photo didn't come out to show you the backside of it where the scragglies came just like on the on the pink one the first one we did it had some but no big deal real easy to clean up all right guys let's jump over to the printer and check it out and we'll go ahead and go on down to prepare an auto home let it auto home again Now that it's homed, you're going to prepare the blue axis, one millimeter, Z, and it says we're at negative one, which is what we expect to be at. And now we're going to go up about 25 millimeters. That should be far enough to let us put this on, I think. So we can take it. Put it on there and clip it in place and there we go and now we can start moving it down three two negative one and let's see here let's see if i can get a little bit better shot at it so you can see how it's sitting now all right guys as you can see now the duct is not touching the build plate and the hot end is and there's actually a little bit of space underneath the duct so that means that this is the proper height this one will work as is all right so now let's install a fan in it and get it all wired up uh, i'm gonna go ahead and do that then i'll pop back over and show it to you all right guys as you can see it's installed and now if i can come over here and go to control temperature fan speed crank it up for you get it up here turn it on as you can see now it spins now how I got this fan to spin and the back one is also spinning too you just have to take my word it's kind of hard to show it to you is what I did is I created a little splitter um, I'll show you the picture I'll show you a picture here of the, the wires I used and I basically made a Y connection where I have one that goes up, which goes into the wiring that goes into here, and it splits, and one goes back towards this fan, and one comes forward towards this fan, which plugs in right here. And then I made an extension using the same things to extend the heater to the plug because it was too short, and I just needed to make an extension that goes from here to here. So I just made an extension to stretch it out. And I made sure when this moves all the way over that nothing hits, nothing gets caught, nothing gets snagged, this is far enough away from the blades here it can't it's not going to get stuck in the fan it can't get into it uh, i made sure i zip tied all this stuff over here so nothing it rubs back on the rails or gets in the way of any of the fans or any of the motion from side to side so now we can have that on we can come down here and we can talk the auto home See that it works just fine thank you all for watching if you like what you saw please like and subscribe please leave a comment down below i'd love to hear from you until next time have a great day